Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is a troubleshooting of a pressure switch, and we're also going to be replacing it. But I want to show you how I uh, was troubleshooting this pressure switch in order to determine that it is actually bad. Uh, it is a uh, Infinity 8.V series, and this has a two-stage gas valve, and therefore there's two pressure switches, and this is 80% efficient. You see, it has metal exhaust here, and it has one tube, a pressure tube coming off of the inducer housing coming over to a T into both the high fire and the low fire pressure switch. So first thing we're going to do, uh, the customer had called, said that they don't have heat. We're going to go ahead and make sure that the thermostat is not calling for any other uh, things such as a fan or anything like that. And then we're going to jump R to W on the control board and turn the door switch on. So now we're going to jump R and W. The power is off. Now we're going to turn the door switch on with our magnet. I've mentioned to you before that this magnet we actually got free out of a microwave. You can get two of them out of a microwave. So uh, they hold down the door switch instead of electrical tape or something that could pop off. Now we're getting ready to turn the power on to this furnace at the main switch. So you know we have out one alligator clip on this side of the pressure switch and another alligator clip on this side of the uh, gas valve. Now all that this is doing is just finding a common uh, this can also be put onto the C terminal at the control board. Uh, this is just up here so you can see it because you can still check for 24 volts between a hot and ground. Uh, to be more reliable, you can put this probe onto the C terminal on the control board. I just have it here so you can see it. So how I determine we need to check the pressure switch is just a sequence of operation. So as soon as we called for heat, the inducer fan turned on right away. Uh, but the hot surface igniter that's down below this gas valve is not getting 120 volts to it. So right here in this plug, after this inducer motor is running for 30 seconds or so, we're still not getting 120 volts to this plug going to that hot surface igniter over there. So the sequence of operation is the inducer motor turns on, the pressure switch closes, the hot surface igniter turns cherry red, the gas valve opens, the flame sensor proves a flame, the blower motor delay starts at the control board, and then after that, then you have the blower motor turns on. So what we want to see is we know that this is going to be running, but we want to see if voltage is going to the pressure switch and then back out of the pressure switch, back to the control board to tell the control board to send voltage to the hot surface igniter. So I just turned the power on, the inducer motor turned on, you see we have 26 volts right here going into the pressure switch. And now you see that we don't have any voltage coming out of the pressure switch. So either the pressure switch is broken or the inducer motor is not pulling enough negative water column in order for that pressure switch to electrically close. So the next thing we need to do is to check the negative water column pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the furnace off. So you see we have our input for our negative water pressure coming in right here and coming right through over to the pressure switch and we're also reading it over at our manometer. We've zeroed the water column manometer out. It says 0.00, .00 and now we're ready to go. So now that the system's running, we see that we're pulling a consistent negative 0.53 inch water column. So now we need to check to see what that pressure switch is actually rated for. So if you can see that, this pressure switch is actually rated for negative 0.15 inch water column. So that's the one that's actually in the back here. The pressure switches are mounted like this, and this is the one that's in the back. We're starting in low fire, okay, not high fire on this furnace. So that's the problem. We're going to go ahead and disconnect the electrical wiring, and we're also going to go ahead and hook up our pressure switch to the pump assembly on our water column manometer. This will be just a double check just to make sure that the pressure switch is actually bad. So now what we have is we have these two tubes connected to a Y fitting and then this is going to get attached to the pressure switch. As well we have these two electrical connections right here that are coming over to the actual pressure switch. So when we see this light lit then we're going to know that the pressure switch is actually closed. So now to turn this on what we're going to do is make sure that this is not connected to the pressure switch. We're going to go ahead and press the test button, and the pump is going to go ahead and get started. So make sure that this is not connected to the pressure switch.
this light right here will be able to tell us if the pressure switch is actually closed. So we're going to go ahead and connect this into the pressure switch. So the pressure is going up and we do not see that light lit and we see that we are uh, beyond what the pressure switch is actually rated for when the electrical connection is supposed to be closing. So let's go ahead and increase the pressure and see if it closes or not. All right, now it's saying it did temporarily close, if you saw that, at 0.5 or so, but now, once again, it's open. So uh, it's definitely not working properly here. So you see that we're up at 1.0 inch water column. So, so that pressure switch is definitely not working. This inducer motor was actually only pulling a negative 0.55 inch water column. So that pressure switch is definitely the problem, and now we're going to go ahead and replace it. So you know if this furnace started in high fire, then we would be testing the voltage on this pressure switch. Just to be sure, since we're replacing the one pressure switch, I bought the assembly so we can go ahead and replace both at the same time. Care must be taken to make sure that the problem actually is the pressure switch. I, I do believe a lot of pressure switches do get replaced and it's not actually the problem. A lot of times on 90% efficient furnaces, it's the condensate drain or some other issue. On 80% efficient furnaces, it's usually the inducer motor housing potentially or some other issue that's causing the problem. If you don't have the exact right pressure switch, then you can use a universal pressure switch if need be. Uh, and then you can go ahead and set that uh, to the correct negative pressure using your water column manometer along with the pump inside. I do, however, recommend eventually getting the correct pressure switch and then taking your universal pressure switch out of there. That's just something in order to get a uh, building owner up and running in case of uh, an emergency such as a no heat service call. So now it's very simple. It's just a matter of making sure that you have the uh, correct wires um, put back in the same spots again. So you can take a picture of that or uh, write in Sharpie maybe what color wire goes where. This one has screws up on the top of the furnace that hold the pressure switch in place. It's just two 5 16 screws, so we're just going to go ahead and unscrew them. And here's the new pressure switch. You want to make sure that you have this tubing up and out of the way of the inducer motor housing. You don't want that to end up accidentally melting. Now we're going to go ahead and put our electrical connections back in. Make sure that each of these connectors are nice and snug. If not, you want to go ahead and recrimp them with your wire strippers and cutters. Now we should be good to go and we're going to go ahead and turn the furnace on now and see if the uh, voltage is making it through the pressure switch and if the hot surface igniter ends up igniting. All right, so we know 24 volts is making it through the pressure switch, and I checked that with my multimeter, and you see the next step in the sequence of operation, the hot surface igniter. So now we're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and check out the rest of this furnace just to make sure the operation is good. And if you want to support this channel, any purchases made through Amazon after clicking any of the links below ends up providing a commission for the channel. And if you want to help support new videos, Head on over to patreon.com slash acservicetech. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.